Hi, this is Tony Stanislavski from Milwaukee Area Technical College. Uh, I'm going to be chronicling uh, in the best I can through video the build of this PC. Um, <clears throat> the first video, which will be this one, will be an overview of how we go about this, kind of my strategies, what I do. Um, and I'm not going to, it's going to be hard for me to show you, I'm not, I don't really have the video set up to be able to show you exactly installing this, installing that. Um, I'm going to kind of walk, talk through it and then do it and then probably show you the completed pro the product and maybe give you some tips and hints along the way, at least what, what I, what I do. First of all, you're looking at the case. The case we uh, chose was CM Storm, a Scout. Um, I think it's a Cooler Master case. Yes, I believe it is a Cooler Master case. And what you're going to see with brand new PC cases is that typically they open up on both sides. So I have this side open, which would be looking at the motherboard from the top. And then you can see the dining room table here. That would be the back side where I have the top off. And that'll allow me to do some stuff with uh, cable management um, and hide the cords. What's nice about this motherboard is you'll notice that they have some standoffs in. Uh, these standoffs are, are uh, let's see if I can get in here kind of show you. There's a standoff here uh, already inserted. And then what you'll notice is they have ATX and micro ATX and what standoffs should be put in uh, for whichever motherboard that you're working with. Um, and again, I'll come back to that, but the, that's kind of a nice little feature of the of the case that some cases I see haven't had. The other big important piece is your documentation that comes with the case. And again, what I do is, before I always build, I kind of go through these, uh, the documentation for the case to see how exactly some of the mechanisms work. Sometimes they're a little bit different. These obviously slide down. I mean, slide up and push forward and then lock in place. So you'll see that when I put in the, uh, put in the, um, both the DVD-ROM and the hard drive. I mean, not the hard drive, just the DVD-ROM. Then you'll notice they have hard drives here and there's brackets that are gonna fit on the hard drives that's gonna allow the hard drive come in. These here, you'll notice, are kind of uh, lift up and uh, automatically, you know, put it back in. Uh, so after I unscrew this. So a lot of this stuff becomes really easy to manage. Um, there's not a lot of screwing and unscrewing of things to keep things in place. And that's really nice. And that, that's probably came about in the last, oh, I'd say, three or four years, five years maybe, where cases do that. Again, I can't emphasize enough the documentation for both the case and eventually the motherboard are going to be your two best friends. Okay? So, whoa. <laughs> again, I've, I've been building computers since, well, probably the mm -hmm. first one I built was maybe over 20 years ago, 286. And when... Compared to the documentation that they used to give you, compared to the documentation they give you now, is night and day. And uh, really, they've made it so easy to be able to do that. So again, here are my parts. Uh, I have my motherboard still wrapped up. After I put in the uh, standoffs, I'll be uh, putting the motherboard in and screwing in the motherboard. Uh, I have my memory. Right, 16 gigs of RAM. I have my video card. Right. I have my processor. And I have my CD-ROM or DVD-ROM, I'm sorry, old school. And then hard drive. And my power supply okay so I have all of those and I'll be using those you know as we as we put together now a couple of things one is I usually have a couple of bowls on the table that I keep track of my screws so these are the screws actually for my sides of my um, case and I usually keep a couple of bowls in there here are all the screws 
and the standoffs that came with the case, some ties for cord management, all that. Again, another thing that came with the manual, I mean with the case, how to put in the standoffs for the motherboard and, and whatnot. These cords are gonna be the cords that attach both power and uh, cords that go to my motherboard that control my lights, my USB and all that kind of stuff. And again, that'll all be found in my motherboard documentation. So, so uh, a couple of things. One is <clears throat> the computer that we're building or that I chose to build for the project product roughly cost about $550. Um, it's, it's an i3 with a 16 gigs of RAM. So I would call it probably a mid-level uh, or entry-level computer build. Again, we didn't spend very much on the video card. Um, and But for $550, if you amped up the video card to a decent video card, you know, wanted, you know for $200 or $250 or even less, uh, you have a fairly nice system here. Um, the difference is the late, it's, it's the latest uh, bus, Sandy, Sandy Bridge. So, um, you know, for, for the amount of money, now again, I would, if I was building this PC for myself, I probably would have upgraded. I will say this, the, the, when you're building a PC, especially for home use, or for if you're an enthusiast or things like this, really the purchase of the case is one of the most important things. And I would probably go more expensive and a little bit larger than this. Uh, if I was building my own PC, I like to have a little bit more room in the case to work with and upgrade. Um, but this is a good solid case for, for, for the price that we were going to put into it. So the last PC I built, I spent roughly around $2,000. It's an i7, uh, much better video card. Um, I still only have 8 gigs of RAM actually. Uh, and, but I believe the case, since this case was roughly around 70, my case came in roughly around 150. Um, the nice thing if you invest the money in a case is that if you plan on upgrading, uh, you can always just recycle the case. I mean, case can last almost forever. Uh, I usually end up handing down my computers to family members as I build new ones, so I don't go way overboard because I'm going to end up building again from scratch. So, so the other thing, the other couple of questions that I got was grounding. Um, now, the if you take the A plus test or you go into certain environments or situations, they're gonna tell you, mm. yeah, you should ground. And use it, either use a strip that wraps around your wrist that then gets attached to the case. There's grounding mats. Uh, I'm in my house. It's relatively, the humidity is fine, so it's not overly dry in here. Uh, I'm also wearing rubber shoes, uh, you know, tennis shoes, actually Crocs, but uh, with rubber soles. Um, and really the only, I've never worn a grounding strap, strip, uh, ever once when I built my own PCs and that's when I've spent my own money. Um, what I make to sure, make sure to do is, again, I'm also on hardwood floors right now, but what I make sure to do is to ground myself by touching the case before I touch any of the electronic components. And I, uh, and I uh, excuse me, that's the dog barking. And I um, uh, make sure that I'm on a hardwood floor with rubber, rubber soles. So it's, for me, it has never been a big deal. I've never, uh, I've never um, burnt out a piece of a, a component. Now I know some of you already have had RMA issues uh, with dead on arrival, and that seems to be more frequent, uh, especially when you buy less expensive equipment. So they're probably their testing uh, is not as thorough. So I'm just going to tell you the steps that I'm going to take. Uh, and then when you when I do my do the second video what will happen is the motherboard will, will be inserted This also came with the motherboard and sometimes this is tricky This is what you install to the side of the case here where your peripheral ports Your USB your data your audio all that will be coming out of it It'll it will match up with your motherboard and again this usually depending on the case It'll stick in there and sometimes you have to a little bit finagle it take your time and uh, eventually it'll pop in there. And then when you get the motherboard in there, you'll, the, the holes will match up with here and you'll be able to just insert onto, into the case. So the problem if I do that process on video is I'm gonna be hunched over in here and you're gonna either see the top of my head 
or something like that. So, but I mean, again, the process is to stick this in. I'll be taking this off, putting in the rest of these uh, standoffs for the motherboard. I'll be putting the motherboard on and then I'll be screwing it, matching it up, pushing this through. It'll snap in and then I'll tighten the motherboard. Now, I oftentimes <laughs> don't even put all the screws in. I'll put all the standoffs in, but I won't. I'll put maybe four screws in um, on the outside uh, for the board. I oftentimes don't even do that. Um, in my, on my computer in, in, my, in, my, in my office, I probably have about four screws in there. Um, if it holds it in, it holds it in and I'm fine. So I usually don't go overboard. The other thing is when you're screwing in the motherboard, uh, you never want to torque it like it's no tomorrow and tight. You always want to go where your last one leaves a little bit of leeway so that it's easy to unscrew and uh, work with it more, more gently. So for the next video, what I'll have done is I'll have placed the motherboard in and I'll have placed this into the side of the case and I'll have added the rest of the standoffs and I'll have screwed in the motherboard and we'll have the motherboard in. And that's typically the first process, that's the first step that anybody would take uh, while they're assembling their PC. And uh, for most people, if you've never done it before, uh, it's not that difficult, especially when they label things and when you look on the motherboard and you see where the holes line up and uh, it's, it's fairly easy to do. So again, something that uh, I'll do in the, for the next video you'll see done. So I'm trying to think if, there's, if I'm leaving anything out from kind of the general, oh, I, a couple of other tips after having built all these PCs. What I end up doing is I always take, I save everything. So screws, I put them all, I mean, anything that's extra that I don't have, because they often give you many more things than, than you actually need for your build or your particular build. I take that, I put that all in a uh, baggie and uh, typically I keep it in, I keep all my extra boxes, all my documentation, all that kind of stuff in the case box. Um, unless I'm gonna be transporting the PC and I wanna put the PC back in to the case box to take it somewhere. So uh, that's typically what I do. I keep everything together, I label it, which PC it is, what build it is, and uh, save all the documentation to have that all in there. Um, I never throw anything, any of the boxes out. <laughs> I keep them, especially in case I have to RMA or I have to, uh, or I wanna sell or break apart or whatever. I'm always a big fan of keeping the boxes and keeping it all in one place and remaining organized and especially having, even though this stuff all of it would be found online, having the documentation, you know, and then I easily know what board it is. Uh, you know, I can easily, if I run into issues or problems, I can easily um, look for that documentation and figure it out. So especially if you're building more, a lot of PCs or you end up starting building PCs for friends and family, uh, that's a good way to go. So uh, this is again the overview video and for part two you will see the motherboard installed and I will have installed this plate and then we'll talk about installing RAM processor and uh, video card and then I'll talk about hard drive and DVD installation and then we'll talk about hooking things up and putting in the power supply and the correct connections. So my, my guess is this might be a series of four or five videos. I'm trying to keep them a little bit shorter than longer um, and trying to break them up into a little bit more pieces so that they're easier to follow or if you just wanna follow one. And again, I know, especially for my online students, a lot of you have already successfully done this um, and feel free to add in the comments or anything like that, any other advice or suggestions you might have as you did uh, your build. So I look forward to having the second video. Thank you. Bye-bye.